Welcome, thank you for coming to my session. Um, Security in Drupal, What Can Go Wrong? Or the slightly longer version of the subtitle, What Could Possibly Go Wrong? <laughs> um, I'm Benji Fisher. The session I was just in not only had the date, but also had the time, and I, I'm, I'm not that important. Um, so, introduction. Um, I'm Benji Fisher. My, my handle is just Benji Fisher on Drupal.org, on GitHub, on GitLab. Um, I don't do Twitter anymore. I signed up for Mastodon, but I don't look at it much. But maybe, uh, maybe next year I'll, I'll list my, my Mastodon handle. Um, I'm a member of the Drupal Usability Group. I'm one of the maintainers of the migration subsystem or the Migrate API. Um, and I'm a member of the security team. Um, this is the first time I've given this presentation where I didn't have to say paren provisional member because I've been a member of the team for a little over a year and in January um, I was made a full member. Um, thank you. Uh, I want to point out there are two other members, unless I'm missing someone of the security team in the room. And I also want to set expectations. Um, I'm a member of the usability team, but that does not mean that I'm a usability expert. And I'm a member of the security team, that does not mean that I know everything about security. It is a team. We have a variety of skills. Um, I think I'm useful. <laughs> but, uh, but don't be surprised. If you ask me some question and the answer is I don't know, and if I defer to Chris or Peter, that is not too surprising. You can follow along with these slides. Um, go to slides.benjifisher.info. Um, I've had that domain for a while. If I were getting something similar today, I would probably try for IO rather than info, but that's what was available back then. Um, and that's a, a, a simple index page listing. Um, this is actually the second one from the top because I'm going to give a version of the session tomorrow at uh, Nerd Summit. Um, I think it's the same. The slides are the same, but the presentations may be different. Um, so quick outline of the talk, the introduction, that's where we are now. Um, what is the OWASP top 10? What is Drupal? And then don't be too alarmed by this long list, but there are 10 things in the OWASP top 10 from broken <laughs> access control, cryptographic failures, and so on. Um, number 10 being server-side request forgery. Uh, but I only plan to talk about two of those to be determined. And then we'll have a sort of wrap up at the end. Um, my slides borrow some of Peter's cracking Drupal presentations. And I also borrow some text, um, some text from OWASP.org. Um, and the standard footer on that site uh, mentions that um, almost all of its content is licensed with a Creative Commons uh, copy left. And all of my presentations have a very similar um, licensing at the end, so you can get the source feel free to use or adapt um, anything from any of my slide decks. I will be flattered if you use them. Um, so uh, what is the OWASP top 10? Project, the P is for project. OWASP stands for Open Web Application Security Project. Um, it's a nonprofit foundation that works to improve the security of software. And it is not Drupal specific. So. I, I guess this slogan is getting a little old because while we were developing Drupal 8, we talked about getting off the island, not doing everything in Drupal using just stuff that was done for Drupal. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, the slogan is getting old, but we, we still go, go by it. That uh, we, we sort of want to see what Drupal looks like from the perspective of the larger web community, and we want to learn and use stuff from the larger web community. Um, so that's what OWASP is, and, and their top 10, it's a standard awareness document for developers and web application security. It represents a broad consensus about the most critical security risks to web applications. And the list is updated every few years. The most recent version is from 2021. So 
when I started developing this slide deck, it had just recently been revamped. Um, so what is Drupal? This is a Drupal camp. Probably most of you have a good idea of it. But one, there might be some people just learning Drupal, so I want to cater to them. And second, I want to see, think about what Drupal looks like from the outside. When someone else looks at Drupal, someone who isn't working with Drupal every day like me, what do I tell them? It's a content management system. So what does that mean? Drupal says, enter data in my forms. I will save that to my database and I'll use it to generate web pages. And what does a hacker say? Sounds great, let's get started. What can I enter into your forms? So one thing a hacker might do is it's seeing a name field, instead of typing in Bob, we'll type in Robert, close quote, right paren, semicolon, drop table students, semicolon, hyphen, hyphen. Why would the hacker try to do that? Jay, do you have a suggestion? Well, that's a SQL injection attack. Uh, right. He's attempting to get into the database. Yes, this is... Specific uh, students uh, in a database. I, I have to repeat everything you say for the sake of the recording. So, so yes, this is an attempt to add a SQL injection attack. It's trying... I just told you that Drupal is willing to take whatever you type into my field and save it in the database. So we want to try to get some SQL commands into the database rather than just data. So what the hacker is hoping, anticipating, is that behind the scenes, I have some PHP code that looks like this. Dollar $SQL, that's PHP variable, is assigned the string, insert into students name values of name. And dollar $name is probably whatever comes from that field, whatever you typed into my web form. And then if you type in that particular thing, you get SQL equals insert into student's name, values Robert, semicolon, semicolon ends the SQL statement, new statement, drop table students, semicolon, and then the dash dash there, what is the dash dash in SQL? Comment. It's the comment character. So everything that comes after, which is what the programmer intended to be the end of this statement, um, gets commented out and doesn't generate a um, syntax error. So the hacker is trying to get me to drop all the tables in my database. Um, I did not invent this example. It comes from XKCD, number 327, Exploits of a Mom. And XKCD is also very generous about uh, reusing their, um, their cartoons. So I, I always try to work in one or two XKCD cartoons into a slide deck. Um, so that is what, oh, and yeah, I, I meant to say one or two slides ago. So Drupal is a web CMS. You type data into the fields and its forms, and it saves it to the database. From a security point of view, this is one of the worst ideas ever. Hackers just love it. And they are constantly trying, and trying, some of them trying pretty hard, and some of them have been doing this for a long time and are very good at it. They're constantly trying to do something like that. And Drupal, we, we try to fight back. Um, what else is Drupal? It's an active international open source software project. Um, from the, the Drupal.org website, it says that the Drupal community is one of the largest open source communities in the world. We're more than a million passionate developers, designers, trainers, blah, 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 all working together. I'm a developer, so I lose interest after we get to them, after that point on the list. Drupal is also um, a project that takes security seriously. Um, Chris, Peter, how long have you been on the team? I'm new. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> like, Maybe, yeah. Since 2008? Yeah. So Peter's been on the team for about 15 years and, and Chris for about seven. Um, so the security team... Things, things were easier back then. <laughs> things were easier back then. That, that, that's why you need more people on the team now, because it's getting more complicated. Yeah. The, so, I mean, it was easier to get on the team. 
Oh. <laughs> um, so the team was formalized in 2005 with a mailing list. So, so Peter has been around since nearly the beginning, has had three team leads in that period. And members are volunteers, and we come across, we, we come from three continents. That means the sun never sets on the Drupal security team. <laughs> this point was driven home to me this week as we were working together from me on the East Coast to Lee Rollins in Australia to uh, Dave Long. Dave Long, I, I know him by his username, Longwave, um, in, in Britain. Um, and yeah, we, we, we've got the clock covered. Um, three continents. So the US, Australia, or North America, Australia, and Europe. So if you know anyone from South America who you think would be an asset to the security team, get them to apply. Um, also Asia. Asia's pretty big. Lots of people in Asia. Why don't we have anyone from Asia on the team? We need more diversity on the team. We need more people on the team. Um, so that's the end of the introduction. And now, it's your choice. As you can see, there are 10 items in the OWASP top 10. I have not filled out all of them. I can talk about broken access control, number one, cryptographic failures, number two, injection, which includes SQL injection and some other things, that's number three, um, vulnerable and outdated components, that's number six, um, and I probably have time to talk about any two of those. So what would you like to hear? Vulnerable and outdated components. Vulnerable and outdated components. I like that one. It's number six. It's more than halfway down the list. But um, any other opinions? OK, we'll start there. And when I get through this, we'll have time for a second. And I started it. So, yeah. so the best kept secret in web security is that the most important thing to do is the boring stuff. And it's the stuff you already know. It's a lot like, if you see this on the web, will you think of it as clickbait? How to live a half, a long, not, not happier, how to live a longer, healthier life. It takes just four minutes a day. Does that seem to be, to be too good to be true? Does that sound like clickbait to you? But it's like web security, the most important stuff is the stuff you already know. And this is something you already know. And I'll give you a hint. Is the hint? Oh, I gave it away. Um, I meant to give you a hint first that, that the four minutes isn't all at once. It's two minutes twice a day. So brush your teeth. Two minutes twice a day, that's f f four minutes. It's the best advice you'll get today. You should also floss. And you really will live a longer, healthier life. This is dental hygiene. It's the boring stuff that you already know. It is the most important stuff, though. And for web security, the most important stuff, likewise, is the boring stuff that you already know. Um, use good passwords. Have a policy. Like. Every so often you, 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 you hear someone talk about the, the list of the most commonly used passwords. And what's at the top of the list? Password, Password right? <laughs> you know. So one, for your own passwords, don't do that. And two, if you're administering a web application, don't let your users do that. Um, second point, which is mostly what uh, what I'm talking about um, in this section of the talk is to keep your software up to date. And um, before I started the recording, you, you might have noticed that, that I, I incautiously connected my computer and, and let the software update thing pop up, and I promptly hit the button. Because now that you all know that my laptop has out-of-date software on it, I better take care of it. Well, I did. Um, Unless hosting is your core business, do not run your own servers. So, you, you already know this, right? But this is the important stuff. 
So, all right, I guess go, going back to the top, this is supposed to be about vulnerable and outdated components. So what I'm mostly going to talk about, I went too far, mostly going to talk about is keep your software up to date, and specifically in the context of Drupal. Um, so know the schedule. Um, security release windows are Wednesdays between 12 and 5 Eastern time. So yay, we're here in Princeton. Eastern time is convenient for us. Everyone else all over the world has to figure out what that means for their time zone. Um, core updates um, or core security updates, I should say, come out on the third Wednesday of the month. Not every month, but if there is going to be a Drupal security update, it will be on the third Wednesday of the month. And we had one just, today is Friday. We had one two days ago, yes. I am well rested. Um, so two days ago was the 16th, yeah, that was the third Wednesday. Um, and for contrib modules, a security update can come out on, on any Wednesday. And it's always in that, our, we really try hard always to make it in that window of 12 to 5 Eastern time. Um, so, so know the schedule that, that patch version updates can come out on the first or third Wednesday, and the third Wednesday is when it might be a security update. Um, contrib module security updates come out on any Wednesday and contrib modules can have regular updates whenever they want um, and minor versions come out in June and December so let's see coming up in June will be Drupal 10.1 um, I'm kind of excited about that not for security reasons but for usability reasons um, and then minor versions are supported for a year. So let's see, just a few months ago in December, Drupal 10.0 came out at the same time as Drupal 9.5. Drupal 9.5 will be supported for actually a little less than a year. That's a special case because Drupal 9 relies on Symphony 4, which reaches... Peter says 9.5 is getting longer support. I think it goes until November of 2023, which is when Symphony 4 reaches end of life. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you might be right. So, slightly, slightly less than your normally a minor version gets support for a year. And this coming December, um, when Drupal 10.2 is released, that's when the support for 10.0 will end. No, you're right. Drupal 9 reaches end of life due to dependency on Symphony 4. Okay. Peter checked, and I, I had it right. Um, oh, I, and I should have said earlier, please feel free to interrupt me with questions at any point. Do not save your questions for the end. Um, this isn't timed so carefully that, that I, 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 I can handle questions. I, I prefer getting the questions earlier. So the other thing is, is to know the channels, and let me just open some of these links. Um, on the web, there are security advisories. And again, these are usually issued on Wednesdays during those windows. Um, this week, we had um, a couple of contrib, yes, two, two contrib security advisories for the responsive media image formatter and media responsive thumbnail. Um, and then we had, what, three core security advisories. Um, there are RSS feeds, if you use an RSS reader. Um, There's an email list you can send for. Yes. That's the ne next one on my list. If you go to your um, drupal.org user page, I, I think it's safe for me to show it to you on a screen. You're, like, I can edit it, but you can't. So I, as long as I'm not showing you my password to log in. And then let's see, the slide says where to find it. Um, edit, and then my newsletters. So 
So check that box and get the newsletter for security announcements. Um, and then there's a security team channel in the Drupal Slack and unofficial uh, Twitter feed and just recently a Mastodon feed, um, both of which are called at Drupal security. Um, so know the difference. Um, we have major versions, minor versions, patch versions. The major versions like going from nine to 10. That's a big deal. Um, you know, expect to spend some time upgrading your site from Drupal 9 to Drupal 10. Um, there are the minor versions that come out every six months. And those are less disrupt disruptive and they include new features. Because they include new features, they occasionally break something that, that used to work. Um, patch versions going from like 9.5 Point four to nine point five point five, which was released two days ago. Um, patch versions should not be disruptive. You know, of course, we're not perfect. Sometimes they are disruptive, um, and they are mostly for bug fixes and security fixes. And for security releases such as nine point five point five, um, we really go to a lot of effort to avoid any disruptions. Um, so, so that's sort of the hierarchy of major to, to patch release and security release. And, and the point is that the security updates are the least disruptive of all because we, we really want people to apply them as soon as possible. And so we want to make sure that we make that possible, that we don't break anything so that people can update immediately. Um, when a security update comes out, some people will read the security update, uh, the security advisory, decide whether it affects their site, and if it applies, then, then they'll apply the security update, and if it doesn't apply, maybe they'll put it off for a week or two, or till next month, or who knows how long. That's one strategy. A second strategy is the security update comes out, do some basic testing, make sure that it doesn't blow up, and deploy it. And I recommend the second approach. Um, why is that? Because either way, you are trusting the security team. If you read the security advisory, decide whether or not it's going to make a difference for your site, then you're trusting that the security team has anticipated every way that the vulnerability can be exploited. Um, and that's hard because the people who want to exploit the security vulnerability are going to read the code changes that we make and say, oh, this thing was broken. I can figure out a different way to exploit that. So if you trust the security, security advisory, then you're trusting the security team in one way. You're trusting us to have figured out all the possible ways that it could be exploited. Um, the other option, you can trust that we've made it non-disruptive, that we haven't broken anything. And we're updating our own code. We're updating Drupal code. So while that's not easy, I think that's less hard than anticipating every way that a security vulnerability can be exploited. So either way, you're trusting the security team. I recommend that you go ahead and update it. And Let's see, do I say this on the next slide or do I not ever say it explicitly? I guess I don't ever say it explicitly on the slide. So the point about the, the hierarchy of disruptiveness, um, security updates being the least disruptive, is that if you are behind on your regular updates, if, if you only update when security updates come out, then when you update, you're applying several patch fixes along the way, and then the security update, you're greatly increasing your chance for disruption. You're greatly increasing the chance that you'll have to fix something before you can apply the security update. So try, you know, it, I, I can't give advice for every site. There, you know, some people are managing one site as a hobby, and others are managing hundreds of sites as some large 
in installation of Drupal. Obviously, you're going to have dis different strategies. But in general, try to keep your software up to date. Apply patch releases when they come out, but not on an emergency basis. But at least once a month, try to keep get your software up to date so that when the security window rolls around, if there is a security update, you're already running the current version, and then you can apply the security update with a high degree of confidence that it's not going to break anything. Make sense? So, so that is what keeping your software up to date looks like in the Drupal world. Um, of course, there's a lot more to that. You have to keep PHP up to date, Apache or Nginx, whatever your web server is. Um, and all of that comes under the heading of one of the things I said at the top, which is that you shouldn't be maintaining your own servers unless you're in the server business. Or if you're a hobbyist and no, no heads are going to roll when your site gets hacked. I've, I've done that. Um, yeah, I, I even have a slide mentioning that Drupal 9 goes end of life in November of this year. Um, so that's the bottom of that column. That's all I have to say about keeping your software up to date. Any questions or comments? What about non-Drupal software? Like, those are entities. What about non-Drupal software? like uh, composer dependencies. Yeah. Um, e even before I joined the security team, I, I sort of realized that the release managers and the security team stay up at night worrying about all the dependencies that Drupal relies on. Drupal relies on Symfony, which is why Drupal 9 will get slightly less than a full year of, of full support. Um, so um, th there, there are ways of checking. There, there's, well, we'll just compose your update. We'll update everything all at once, which is probably a good thing to do from time to time. I, th there is a composer command to check for, for vulnerable components, isn't it? Like composer I think review or something? There's a library, yeah. There is some library. I'm, I'm afraid I, I don't remember it offhand. But anyway, um, the release managers and, and security team stay up all night worrying about vulnerabilities in Symfony, vulnerabilities in Twig, vulnerabilities in all the other packages that, that we use now that we have gotten off the island, now that we are not trying to do it all ourselves. What we don't worry about is NPM dependencies because we, like, we would never get any sleep if we tried to keep up with them. Um, Drupal is a PHP application. It's, it's not a, a Node.js application. Um, but, uh, but yes, you, you should pay attention to those. You should aud audit your site and, and pay attention when you run Composer install. It'll give you some messages at the bottom. Three of your packages are, are out of date. You should probably do something about that and not just ignore them. And, uh, and, 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 and try, try to keep track of, of whether there are any security updates needed for the packages you're using. Any other questions? OK, so now you get to decide on the second topic. All right, I started. It's just about 12. I guess I, I can run quickly through one of the others and, and still leave time for questions. Injection or maybe broken access control? Some of those didn't. <laughs> misconfiguration. Yeah, I haven't filled out that column yet. Misconfiguration. I I I I, I try to fill out one one column every time That's I give this talk. the most vulnerable thing. Is, you know, is misconfiguring some you know a switch or something that allows. So just, just repeating for, for the recording, Jay says that this, this could be just misconfiguring a switch. Yeah. That, that could leave your, your, your application o open to all sorts of vulnerability. In Drupal, we have the permission system. And if you aren't careful about who gets what permissions, um, like if, if you give content editors permission to manage other users' permissions, then, oh, any content manager can give himself complete admin 
tradition. Um, but I, security misconfiguration, I haven't filled out that column. I don't have any slides for it. Um, Actually, we've gone to back into. Someone, someone talked about injection. So let, let me run through that, because that, that's one of my favorites. Um, so the official description of it from the OWASP website is that user supplied data is not validated, filtered, or sanitized by the application. Dynamic queries are used directly in the interpreter. Hostile data is used within search parameters to extract additional sensitive records, or hostile data is directly used or concatenated. And that, that last point was the example that I, I borrowed from XKCD at the start. And, and the full text, of course, is on, on that link to the OWASP website. Um, yeah, and, and one thing I, I do like to do with these talks is cover one of these slides where I actually look at how the vulnerability is communicated. What happens if you subscribe to that email or you read the security advisory on the website? So this was SA Core 2014-005. Drupal 7, this was two, 2014, Drupal 7 includes a database abstraction API to ensure that queries executed against the database are sanitized to prevent SQL injection attacks. A vulnerability in this API allows an attacker to send specially crafted requests resulting in arbitrary SQL execution. This can lead to privilege escalation, arbitrary PHP execution, or other attacks. This can be exploited by anonymous users. Now, if you just say, oh, security advisory, mumbo jumbo, this is hard to understand, and, and go on to the next one, you're, you're missing something. This is plain English. I was pretty early in my Drupal career when I read this. And when I read this, my jaw dropped. Um, arbitrary PHP execution and can be exploited by anonymous users. That's about as bad as it gets. Um, my response in an email to, to, to my boss and to the site owners, and I, I'm paraphrasing this from memory, I didn't actually dig up the, the actual email, but this is I, pretty close. Because of the severity of the vulnerability and the simplicity of the update, we tested and updated the site today. Um, and I'm pretty proud of that response, even though this was early in my Drupal career. Um, so does, does anyone know the, the vernacular name for SA Core 2014-005? Drupal-Geddon. Yes, this is Drupal-Geddon. Um, I updated my site within seven hours, which is a good thing, because within seven hours of the vulnerability being released, there were automated attacks going live. When I wrote in that email about the simplicity of the update, um, I took the trouble to look at that patch after picking my jaw up off the ground. <laughs> um, and I realized, do you, do you see the difference between the vulnerable code and the fixed code? The, this, is, this is one of the, the, the few slides I have where, where you have some PHP code, and I apologize to those who don't speak PHP. I think I heard someone answer. The array values of data and not all of the data. Exactly. So in this for each loop, originally it was just looping on data, and it changed that to array values of data. So what array values does is it throws out the original keys in the array, so this dollar i, and replaces it with sequential integers, 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's where the vulnerability was coming from that this thing called dollar i is an array key which could be supplied by the user filling out the form. Um, or I say filling out the form, and that's what one of the fundamental assumptions that you have to avoid, is that when you process data that you expect to be from a form, it doesn't necessarily come from that form. Um, I think the real vulnerability was not that line, but a few lines later, where it constructs a query um, 
it takes the array keys of some new keys array and implode, that means concatenates them with commas, and then it replaces a key in, in there, or, or rather it replaces the key with something coming out of the keys in the query array. That is an awfully complicated line and it's even worse in the actual code because I've inserted line breaks to make it more readable and you notice there are seven lines of comments before you get to that line of code. Um, in my opinion, this is really the vulnerable line even though it's not where the fix was. And the problem is that this line is too complicated. It does too many things in one line of code. And, and that's one of uh, my, my themes in this talk, is that what makes secure code is what makes good code in general. Uh, if you can read and understand the code, it is more secure. If you can't understand it, then you don't know whether there's a security vulnerability in the code. Um, right, so I guess that's as much as I have to say about I mean, you can Injection. also frame it that the vulnerability was trusting the array keys. Yes, you can also tr say that the vulnerability was trusting the array keys, absolutely. And, and, and trusting that people were innocently filling out the form and that is what you were processing, rather than people can post whatever they darn please to a URL provi you provide for processing forms. So, let me just skip to the end. Inclusion. So this is where, again, this, where we've been. We did the introduction. I said, what is OWASP? What is Drupal? We talked about injection, number three. We talked about vulnerable and outdated components. That's number six. And we're now in the conclusion. Um, some references. If you're following along on the link I gave at the beginning, um, you can see all my slide decks and the source files for them. It's just Markdown. Um, the OWASP top 10, um, sort of a, a general information page, and then the specific list for the version from 2021. I suppose I should start worrying about when the next revision will be. Um, there's a link for the Drupal security team, the core release cycle. Again, I talked about the difference between major, minor, and patch releases, how disruptive they are, and security releases. There's a link to the page for security advisories. I have a certain bias. I'm strongly biased towards Drupal core, but I remind myself every so often that, oh yeah, they're also contrib modules, and some of them are pretty good. Um, there's a security review module, which will sort of identify whether your site is um, applying best practices, and that's probably the first step to check for misconfiguration, which Jay brought up. Um, there's the Paranoia module, which doesn't allow PHP eval from the web interface. Um, the Security Kit, which helps with configuring a lot of things like the content security policy, origin checks against CSRF and cross-site scripting. Um, is there a current version of Paranoia? Is there a current version for what Security Kit? Paranoia. For parano there might not be a current version of Paranoia. I don't remember offhand. Because since we took PHP module out of Drupal, or they not? Well, PHP filter is still in Drupal 7, and we're still trying right, right. to support it's Drupal, still 7. Drupal 7. Yeah, I know it's for Drupal 7 more important than. Yeah, so there, there's a full release for Drupal 7 and an RC release, almost two years old for yeah. uh, Drupal I mean, you 9. You did a few other things, but yeah. There's a whole distribution called Garter, um, designed with security in mind. It, it's does a lot of the configuration for you. There's the two-factor authentication module, which um, has made a lot of progress since I started giving these talks. It now has a full release for Drupal 9 and an alpha release for Drupal 10. And I am optimistic that uh, by the time Drupal 9 ends support in November, um, I'm optimistic that TFA will have a full release compatible with Drupal 10. Um, so, five minutes left in the session. Any, any questions that you saved up even though I asked you not to? <laughs> yes? Uh, what does it mean when a module, quote, opts into security coverage, unquote? 
Good. Uh, what does it mean when a module opts into security coverage? And for example, um, I was just looking at the module page for paranoia, so I'll look here. And it has this little shield icon for stable releases. And it's explained up here, stable releases are covered by the security advisory policy. That means um, that if the security team knows about a problem, a security problem with the module, we will try to fix it in secret and have our standard release policy for security releases. We'll release it on a Wednesday in the given window. We'll put out a security advisory. So it does not mean that the security team is actively reviewing the module. It does mean that if a problem with the module is reported to the security team, we will coordinate the update, um, we'll advise on how to fix the problem, um, and we will help with communications. I, I think on the flip side, if it's not opted in, any security vulnerabilities will basically be made public immediately. So. Right. And, and let me repeat that for the sake of the recording. Peter, Peter points out that if it does not opt in, no policy applies, security problems may be reported publicly, um, and may be reported publicly before they're fixed, which is a bad thing. Does that answer the question? Good. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much for coming. Hope you learned something. Hope you keep your sites up secure, and I hope you brush your teeth. Thank <laughs> you.